Piece of cake. With its roots tangled in the traditions of Johnny Carson, David Letterman, Monty Python, Jackass, The Tom Green Show, and various forms of avant-garde performance art, The Eric Andre Show is a seemingly endless bag of tricks. Some have theorized that Eric is trapped in hell, others choose an existentialist frame. But no one theory could apply to every element of such a sprawling project as The Eric Andre Show. In this video, I'm going to focus in on one interesting trend I've noticed in the show's style that sets it apart from its wide range of influences. Eric Andre, first and foremost, puts us on edge, catches us off guard, and leaves us feeling, well, like this. No. Oh, shit! F me! Oh, oh, hey. Hey. Oh, my God. <laughs> to create these feelings, the show ranges from funny to weird to boring to gross to just purely insane. But in my opinion, none of these adjectives quite capture the magic of the Eric Andre show as much as the word random. And to fully dig into the range and depth of the show's intense and at times mind-bending randomness, we'll have to look back at a character I personally think Eric Andre takes after even more than Johnny Knoxville or Tom Green. <laughs> What's up, Doc? Bugs Bunny, at his core, is a modern manifestation of the traditional trickster archetype. According to scholars like Paul Maddock and Lewis Hyde, the trickster is a type of boundary crosser, one who isn't afraid to break societal rules, one who, in Maddock's words, actively violates principles of social and natural order, playfully disrupting normal life. Remind you of anyone? Me scusi, paisano. I'm Mr. Burrito. The human pizza? We spoke earlier. Central to Bugs' modernization as a cartoon trickster is his ability to pull literally anything he needs out from just beyond our view, a technique Eric Andre is equally fond of. To translate this Bugs Bunny-esque trickster quality from cartoon to live action, the show's directors use a clever combination of misdirections and a continuous editing style for clips that couldn't have possibly occurred one after another in real time. But the moments I'm more interested in are those when Bugs, as opposed to simply pulling out random physical objects, pulls out a new narrative or character or intention, breaking the initial logic of the situation. In this clip, Bugs establishes the logic of the interaction very clearly. Him and Elmer Fudd are going back and forth seeing who can threaten each other with a bigger weapon, but his true weapon is to completely undermine the logic they've established, switching his character and intentions from an enemy into a romantic partner. And only through the confusion this logic breaking creates does he ultimately win the battle. When Eric Andre ventures out into the real world, this is often the Bugs Bunny-esque technique he uses to maintain control over every situation he enters, or at least to maintain attention. By constantly catching his subjects off guard, changing his character, his narrative, and his intentions moment to moment, even those unwilling to put up with his ridiculous antics are caught on the back of their feet for a moment like Elmer Fudd, giving him room to take the comedy a step further. Check out how many times he completely breaks the logic of the following interaction in a matter of seconds. Somebody ordered this pizza ball, dude. I'm not paying for this. This thing is straight farm to nut, bro. bro. Pizza aside, let's talk Scientology. Is this a dildo, Joe, too? All right, just get him out gotta get out. Get out. Bro, dude, I know you. You're Ramadan Steve, dude. What's up, Ramadan Steve? Dude, it's Karate Kid Law. If I challenge you in your dojo, you gotta let me take the class. When he switches from delivering the pizza ball to preaching Scientology, Ramadan Steve takes a moment to hear him out, if only because this new character is just purely confusing. The same happens in the following clip when Eric takes his car to the mechanic. How much is it to fix this? How much is it to fix this window? How much is it to fix this back window? My car! Somebody messed up my car! Some teenagers messed up my car! Hey, I'm a car too, you know. The initial bit already subverts the logic of the interaction, but really it's only just slightly more creative than a jackass prank. 
Only when he suddenly switches up his character and his intentions, breaking the logic of a situation that already had so little, do we venture out into the truly mind-bending world of Eric Andre. The same often happens when Eric translates this technique to interview questions, fluidly moving from one situation to the next without any obvious coherence undermining the most basic conventions of not only talk show interviews, but even just normal human conversation. Your mom is Paula Dean. Who said that? That's what it says in my notes. They must have missed the point. No, oh, I don't know. Who told you that? Paula Dean, Paula D. Paula D, Paula D. It's fantastic. Huh? I'm f panicking. What? It's time to play Guess the Celebrity! <laughs> the quickness with which him and Hannibal can continue breaking one situation to get to the next seems like it might have torn a few fundamental threads in the fabric of Polly D's reality. Huh? And you can often see his guest trying to choose a certain logic to hold on to, anything to get a foothold in reality. But Eric is a master in his trickster role, and any time they try to ground the conversation, he switches it up again. Why don't you do Rwanda's Got Talent? What I, they, about I would what? imagine they do. It is the number one syndicated show in the world. In imagine. Rwanda? No, um, Got Talent. Because Don Cheadle was in that movie, and he was fantastic. Right. I mean, you gotta get Don Cheadle on the show. On America's <clears throat> I got talent. Can Ultimately, I this same logic-breaking concept could equally be applied to our relationship with Eric Andre. Our expectation in watching the Eric Andre show, or any show for that matter, is that he's supposed to entertain us in some way. But sometimes, rather than simply breaking the conventional logic of an interaction with a guest, he goes further and subverts even the very purpose of the show itself, not making even the slightest effort to entertain us, his true audience. Hey, you got another guest? Nah. Equally, and with just as little fear, he might catch us off guard with an obviously unfunny bit, just to keep us on our toes, just to never give the viewer exactly what we're expecting. The lady tapped on his shoulder, hey, you swing both sides, how can I see it? The guy said, there's一个安全套,他不知道什么东西,左看右看. The peak of this concept occurred in Season 3, Episode 10, when his least popular and least funny side bit, Bird Up, actually took over the show. These moments, though often abrasive and uncomfortable, are crucial to the Eric Andre experience. In the end, even the viewer's buttons are pushed by this all-powerful trickster, just as much subject to his logic breaking as Jack Black or Howie Mandel. So if he's willing to trick even us, then what is the deeper pleasure in watching the Eric Andre show? Is it his relentless commitment to his role as the trickster that we admire? Are we inspired simply by his dedication to the craft? But it can't just be that. All great artists are dedicated to their craft. Maybe we're just so tired of conventions, both in television and in everyday life, that something which escapes almost all of them is profoundly refreshing. Maybe his subversion of conventional interaction is a way for us as viewers to live momentarily outside these limitations. Maybe it even inspires us to bend and break the constant rules of our everyday reality, to live as complete individuals with all our own personal weirdness and insanity. Or maybe there is no deeper pleasure. Maybe every once in a while I really do just want to feel like this. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, that's all this guy seems to care about.